Welcome to a new series of videos focusing on the PX80 LiDAR scanner and Vision LiDAR software. My name is Tom Elmore, founder of the GeoNav Group, a new 3D LiDAR scanning and mapping company. This series of videos is going to explain to you how I use my scanner and how I use the software for post-processing purposes. This introductory and overview video illustrates the capture capabilities of the scanner, uh, presently looking at 12 different scans that have been registered together within half an inch uh, of, of each other. And the reason why I'm presenting this in the first video is to show you how it captures buildings and ruins, vegetation, the roads, utilities, topography, trees, and then an underground feature which will become present later. So let's get started. In this first video, I want to show you how I do what I do and why I do what I do. Uh, I'm a trained landscape architect with 34 years of experience, so visual representation is critical to me. I chose this scanner for its colored point cloud capabilities and its ease of use. The software I chose, Vision LiDAR, created by GeoPlus out of Montreal, Canada, uh, was the best that I could uh, utilize to create what I wanted to do as both a landscape architect, but also as a 3D LiDAR prof uh, scanning professional. What's nice about this software is I can change it from black and white to color RGB, which is what you see here. I can change the intensity. I can do fly throughs and cross sections. By changing the intensity, I can change the level of detail uh, and what is shown in full color. But care has to be taken uh, to highlight what you're trying to highlight because by having all of the points in 100% transparency uh, gets a little difficult and complicated to see what, uh, what you're looking at. I have found that by scanning in bright sunlight and utilizing the full intensity that the features that are exposed to the, the sun uh, are, are, are absolutely beautiful and you can see a lot of the detail and the color uh, contrast with the materials. Whereas if I come over here to the corner of the house and, or tavern and let it populate, it almost looks photogenic, photographic, but because we can see through the point cloud, uh, it, again, it becomes a little fuzzy. So there are times when I use 100% transparency and definitely times where I don't use it. And again, it just becomes part of the experience of what you're trying to show and the best way to do it. But as we let this populate, you can see the barn off to the right, the road to the north of the screen, the top of the screen, and so there's definitely a, a time and a place to use 100% transparency. But for the most part, I, it, I use it sparingly, but I do use it. It takes a little while to learn and get used to, uh, but as you can see here, uh, once you get a handle on it, you really can create a lot of uh, different uh, scenes and uh, capture capabilities of what you're trying to illustrate for your client. This is a historic site. It's a Revolutionary War copper mine and prison in East Granby, Connecticut. It is a state historic museum and it's open to the public uh, the spring through the fall season. So here I'm scanning out uh, the prison there is uh, enclosed in the walls. The uh, large building in the middle is now used for presentations um, and the cells are, uh, historic cells are down below. The ruins there are on the left 
and it's just an amazing site. It was a great opportunity for me to, to not only learn how to use the scanner, but how to register the scans together and then to present it in a manner um, to highlight what I wanted to highlight, uh, which was supported by the, the incredible software. So we can rotate it um, from plan view to cross sections. You saw it as if we were walking down the road a second earlier. And uh, what we're going to do is just walk through a series of steps that I use to uh, show clients and prospective clients and consultants uh, things that uh, I can do with the software based on the capture that's created that otherwise would take a long time to create. So for instance, here's a, a section of uh, the building there with the fireplace uh, on the second floor, the main floor with the, the holding cells uh, down below. You can see the flagpole, you can see the, uh, the trash barrels there. Now if I were to change the intensity, the stone walls would pop a little bit more but in color mode, then the building would be uh, too dark to visualize. However, the rafters that you're seeing are what was exposed from within the building. So what's really unique with point clouds is you can see through them. So depending on what you're trying to present and illustrate, you have to uh, remove or selectively uh, highlight specific areas so that you can see the object and not look through the object or look through the background all the way through to the foreground. And here what I'm doing is uh, cutting through the outside walls of the building, removing the rest of the landscape and um, capturing the internal the structure of the, of the building. So the trees here that you're looking through are on the outside wall of the wall of the prison. And as I said earlier, you, you can see through the entire point cloud, so it gets a little fuzzy. And that's why I use the fence command to isolate different areas. And so here's a floor plan of the building. And it really is that fast once you have it captured. And by toggling uh, or hiding certain things and unhiding, you can uh, go back to, to showing the entire site. But with the software, we can rotate the scene uh, to bird's eye views or oblique views. But look at the topography there to the right, the focus, the terrain, the terracing, uh, just incredible, the detail that's captured. Again, this uh, scanner has two to three centimeter resolution, and that's pretty darn good. I prefer to scan on bright sunny days so the colors uh, pop uh, and are more vibrant versus on cloudy days. However, if you're using photogrammetry with a camera, you're going to want the cloudy days. So you have to decide what the purpose is of the work, the task at hand that you're focusing on for that day. So here's a cross section from the road through the prison walls, through the prison building, beyond the wall to the uh, right hand side there and down the terrain. I look at the cross section, you just can't beat it. It's fantastic. When I'm using the scanner to maintain the accuracy, I like to walk back and forth six to eight to 10 feet apart from previous areas and so that I'm maintaining that ac accuracy of two to three centimeters. The scanner picks up or captures data up to 80 meters in every direction, but you need to note that the farther away you are from the source, the less accurate the point cloud is. So the greater the, it's gonna be away from the two to three centimeters. So now we're looking through the ground elevation to the underground mine and uh, copper mine and prison. It really was a prison 
holding area during the Revolutionary War. And by capturing both above ground and below ground, I was able to show the State Historic Preservation Officer and the uh, director of the site the relationship between the above ground and the below ground for the first time ever. They were really impressed by it. So here we're changing the transparency of the point cloud, making things darker so it's more legible. The staircase is not historic, dates to the 60s or 70s, I believe, for a visitor interpretation so that visitors could get down into the copper mine. And as you hold the, the scene still f for long enough that you can see it, it populating, the, the software is set up so that it reduces the number of points when you're rotating it and turning it uh, because of the, the large number of points that a project may have. But once you hold it still, yeah, they, they all populate so it becomes visible. And there's the relationship uh, between the underground copper mine and prison and the above ground prison wall. Again, you're looking at 12 different scans that included the tavern and the farm across the street, as well as the woods on the downhill side of the slope. By turning on the different classes and the different scans in the, in the project, you can really isolate what you're trying to show and uh, take it from there, figure it out. I, I tell my clients that once we have it captured, I can show you pretty much anything you want to see. Give me a little time to set it up for you. So by turning the background totally black and keeping it in color mode, uh, you could almost do a lighting diagram to enhance the visitor experience here in the, the underground cave, the, the mine. It really is powerful software. Uh, the scanning capabilities really set things up beautifully. And I'm very pleased with the decisions I made to purchase the scanner and the software. That brings this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed the introduction and overview of the Paracosm PX80 3D handheld LiDAR scanner and the Geo Plus Vision LiDAR software. If you found this video helpful, and would like to keep up to date with our future videos about working with 3D data, please hit the bell below to subscribe. And please join us for our second video, where I will show you how to start a new project and my initial recommendations uh, for processing the data. My name's Tom Elmore, founder of the GeoNav Group, a 3D LiDAR and scanning company. Thank you.